Hello everyone. In this first lesson, we're going to work on setting up our workstation so that we can be prepared to paint. The first thing we're going to do is talk about that palette. I have my palette set up here um, and I kind of like to arrange my colors um, kind of going according to the color wheel. I start with my reds, yellows, move into the greens, blues, and then uh, violets and kind of go around like that. So you want to be able to, you know, kind of keep the lights near the lights and the darks near the darks, um, just in case there's any spilling or over anything like that, you'll be able to take care of it and won't contaminate your colors. So to begin with, I've already kind of got some colors set up here and I'm going to put in a little bit more. And the reason I'm just gonna kind of point this out is because when we're when you're filling up your well, um, you kind of just, you'll notice like at first, you're going to kind of get some of that oily liquid coming out before your pigment actually comes out. That's not really anything to worry about. Um, so then we're going to squeeze out a little bit of an amount here. I usually like to try to do something a little bit bigger than the size of like a pea. Uh, you don't want to get too much in there. A lot of artists might tend to want to like fill up their wells all together. Um, and then when they, you know, kind of harden, it's no big deal. They'll just re-wet them um, a little bit, um, dampen them up before they get started. But I like to just use what I'm going to need. Uh, so the next thing after we set up the, our palette is going to be uh, working on uh, preparing our paper. And anytime you do some work, you want to be able to make sure um, that you have a surface to tape your paper down to. So I have, um, you know, got my paper set up over here and I'm just going to kind of take uh, that painter's tape that we talked about earlier and uh, in our supply video and I'm going to um, adhere my paper down to my work surface so um, to kind of keep it nice and flat because as our paper begins to accept a lot of that water, it's going to tend to do some buckling sometimes. So the very first thing we're going to do is just go around and make sure that our our paper is kind of taped down and and ready to go. So I'm just gonna quickly finish that up here and get us get us ready for the first part of our assignment. Okay, here we go. So I want to be able to talk to you a little bit about your brush choices um, and so that you can kind of get comfortable with the brushes that you're going to be using. We, uh, we talked about the brushes um, in, the first, um, in the first video and we talked about doing, um, you know, nice um, inexpensive brand for when you just get started. Those are our synthetic brushes um, and your pack should have come with some flat ones as well as some round ones. And uh, then we talked about the couple like additional brushes that you're going to need to use along the way. Um, like your script brush um, for your details and your wash brushes. So the first thing I want you to do is just to try to get used to kind of what each brush can do for you. So with your round brushes, they're, they're very versatile. The brush strokes, they can range from like wide and rounded um, to thin and delicate. So round brushes kind of give you more of that organic feel to them. So I'm going to wet my brush up here and uh, put it in, get in the, the paint and set that up. And uh, we're going to just take a look at, um, I'm going to grab some of this, you know, maybe this blue here. I do wet my brush first um, so that I can kind of, you know, make sure again, uh, you'll probably hear me say this a lot, but water is the first ingredient in watercolor. So you want to make always make sure you kind of start with a nice wet brush. And so you're just going to try to, you know, get a feel for the brush and for what each, what the different brushes can create for you. So I'm going to make a stroke here. So a little bit of this um, skipping can be often what you see with, um, with a synthetic brush. It's, it doesn't skip as much with the more expensive ones, um, you know, when you get into your natural hairs. But... Um, Interestingly, with the round brushes, you know, you can kind of get like this nice organic feel to them again. Um, so it's just kind of like watch your, watch your strokes and see what they can do for you. With your um, flat brushes, that's when you get more angular. They're, they're stiff. They can kind of create some very hard edges. It gives you a deliberate appearance to what you're doing. So 
uh, when you're working, you know, with your with your flat brushes, again, you kind of just want to, I'm going to load it up nicely here. I've got it wet, and I'm just going to really get it nice and loaded up on the brush so that you kind of, when you notice, like, you kind of have, like, that drag effect, that it will take a while before it runs out. Another thing, you know, with the, um, you know, with a nice flat brush, too, is, again, you'll notice the difference in the strokes, um, they kind of keep a steady appearance instead of start like a more thick and a thin. So go ahead and, you know, just test out the different brushes, see what they're going to do for you. Uh, as you notice, as I kind of move along, the um, degree of lightness gets uh, lighter and lighter. Um, and that's just as I start to run out of pigment on the brush. And again, you know, making sure that it's full of water and that side and that sort of thing. So get a good, you know, comfortable feeling of where, um, you know, try out your brushes and see what they're going to do for you so that when you are, you know, making your first pieces of artwork, you can make some, you know, nice decisions about, uh, um, what, you know, what, selecting the right brush and what it's going to do for you. So again, here's my rigor brush. We talked about how you can kind of get some nice details with these brushes. Um, so go ahead. Uh, Try them out, and uh, we're going to uh, get ready to start our first exercise here and um, for, the, for our watercolor project. And this week, we're going to be painting a piece of fruit. And so it really doesn't matter, um, you know, what, you know, kind of uh, what you're choosing um, for fruit. Um, I'm just going to take this up from our surface here and get out a new piece. Um, and... And we're kind of going to get started. So, let's, I have chosen an apple to do for the first one. So I'm just going to, you know, again, get my paper out here. And you'd want to take the time to, you know, again, um, set, um, tape it all down and stuff so that it doesn't warp. But for this particular exercise that, um, that I'm going to do right now, um, we're, you know, I'm just going to leave it here so that we can... So that we can get going. So the first thing that you know we're going to want to do it with any watercolor project is to kind of sketch this out. So I'm going to look at you know my apple here, and I'm going to grab my pencil, and I'm just going to kind of lightly sketch in what what I'm seeing with this shape. And the key is too with watercolor, of course, because we know it's very translucent that we want um, that anything's going to show through it. So you know we kind of just want to work on that you know, very basic shape here, um, kind of get in really quickly, a little bit of a feel for what we're, for what we're seeing. And, uh, and I'm just going to make, you know, a few little, uh, again, like just light, light sketches to just to kind of give me a starting off point and a place to work from so that I kind of know the area that I'm, that I'm looking to do. And then, let's see, I'm going to probably, but we're going to begin with a with a round brush here and I'm gonna take my paints out and I'm gonna start with my lightest colors first and so this is what you want to do and again it doesn't really matter what you're choosing for a piece of fruit you know um, it can be anything for this first exercise so I've, um, I've got my brush really wet and I've kind of um, made sure I have a good amount of the yellow I'm gonna start with those lightest colors and I'm just gonna kind of go in like really lightly first to kind of you know get in get in those lighter shades all the probably you know all the way across my apple here and I'm just you know gonna lightly put it in you're gonna want to make sure that you hold the brush where you're comfortable that might be different for everybody I mean some people are you know maybe more controlled almost like a pencil and you know and some people really hold them a, a bit further out on the end there's no right or wrong to it um, you just you know want to make sure that it's, it's comfortable in your hands so again I'm just really quickly going to put in this put in the yellows start with the lighter colors um, and fill it in there then you're going to want to move on um, you know to start introducing a little bit of your other colors so I'm going to you know, grab some of the red again my brush is really wet and you know of course knowing that it's a darker color I know that it's you know going to get heavy quickly so I'm going to be really delicate in the way that I choose to go in and paint this here and you once you get you know going you're going to get a feeling that's comfortable for you too 
Uh, one thing to keep in mind is you're going to notice that anytime I touch wet paint to wet paint, it's going to kind of give you that bleeding look. And so you can see as I'm touching it here that it's kind of immediately grabbing the wetness that's already down on the paper. And it's going to start, you know, blending into that. But that's perfectly acceptable of what you want to happen. Uh, so the next thing is, you know, I'm just going to kind of keep going in and uh, in working with you know some of those some of those colors where I see them I'm paying attention to kind of what I'm seeing over here on the apple that it's a little bit lighter on this side and then it really starts to deepen in value as it gets over here you know to my right hand side so I'm gonna you know again start to just add in some of those other colors no keeping in mind that um, again that it is going to bleed so anytime where you want like a you know to get a nice crisp color you, you're going to want to let it dry first. So for right now, I'm just going to, you know, like, like I said, really, you know, just be a little delicate in what I'm doing here. I'm barely touching my brush um, to the paper. And, and I know that right now that's going to have that natural blending look that's, that's happening for me. Before I go in and kind of add in my darker values, so I'll, I'll, you know, I'll probably, you know, grab a little bit of uh, my violet paint here too, you know, mix some up in my, in my well. And the reason for that is because I know that when I add kind of the, you know, the red and that violet together, it's going to kind of give me that deeper sense that I'm kind of seeing over here. And, but again, I'm, you know, this is really wet right now. So I'm going to wait to go in and be patient for this to dry, you know, maybe 10 minutes or so. And, um, and I'll be able to go in and add in, you know, kind of add in those other colors. Because again, if you can see, if I start to kind of add it in right now, it's going to have that bleeding look. And I want it to be a little bit more dry before I darken this up so that it doesn't get too muddy. Um, and you can kind of notice that, you know, it's gonna, that's going to happen really quick when I work wet into wet. So again, just being patient and waiting for it to dry, I'll go in and add in, you know, um, the other colors. So I'll take this away real quick and I'll show you what I mean. So here I have one finished. Um, as you can see, I, you know, av after I waited for that initial stage to dry, I was able to go in with the, um, with the red and the violet and kind of crisp that up over here and then even introduce a little bit of the yellow green just to kind of to punch it all up. So experiment with what you have I and mean, take your time so that you're sure you're doing a, a nice job and that you're getting the colors, you know, as true to form as you can get them. And let me know what you come up with. Thanks, everyone.